thinks about a lot of things when he's sweating out a discharge from the Army. And Bob Ballard of Bluefield, West Virginia, was no exception. Bob's hobby is making pipes, and while serving with the 69th Infantry in France and Germany, he picked up a few new angles from the European pipe makers. And it looks as if company mess is going to have to eat their spuds in a mighty funny shape tonight. Well, a fella can dream, can't he? Discharge from the Army finds him in Washington, D.C., in front of Bertram's Pipe Shop. Sid Bertram, an ex-Marine PFC, operates an on-the-job training program for the partially disabled under the Veterans Administration. Bertram is releasing the secrets of pipe making to a selected group of World War II vets. Bob is accepted and goes into training with other veterans. After their apprenticeship, Bertram determines whether the trainees are qualified to become journeyman pipe makers. If they are, they can either remain at the Washington factory drawing full journeyman's pay or they can borrow money under the GI Bill and start their own pipe shops in other cities. Here, Galen Martz of Harrisonburg, West Virginia, starts on the first pattern of a pipe. Martz served with the 32nd Infantry and was wounded in the Philippines. The boss himself oversees much of the training. And here, Ben Klepp of Baltimore, Maryland, wounded at the Battle of the Bulge with the 83rd Infantry, and Simon Davidoff of New York City, who served with the 82nd Service Group in France, are making shanks and turning pipe bits under the watchful eye of Sid Bertram, sponsor of the training program. Eddie Michaels, a medically discharged CB, a special instructor in the repair department, looks over the work of his men. Albert Caneva of Washington, D.C., who also served with the CBs, was wounded in one of the South Pacific landings while with the 15th. Charles Decker of Syracuse, New York, former 309th Infantry man who made the long fight for the Port of Brest, and Joe Kosky of Charleston, West Virginia, are taking their turn at repair work. These men are moved from one operation to another so that they may learn all the angles of being a successful pipe maker. Ex-servicemen, partially disabled, work at every known type of pipe-making machine, and several that Bertram has invented to make work easier for those who cannot operate regular type machines. Each man is absorbed in his particular operation, knowing that upon completion of his on-the-job training, he has a good trade or business to step into. Carter Daly of Washington, D.C. is about ready to be promoted either to his own shop or to a regular job as journeyman pipe maker. Arthur Hertz, brought from New York City as a supervisor of the program, checks his work and finds it satisfactory. Yes, pipe dreams can come true, and Bob Ballard's finding that out through the Veterans Administration on-the-job training program, aided by the vision of another veteran who turned his place into a school to help make their dreams come true. <laughs> Elaborate radio broadcast ceremonies attend the opening of the Lieutenant Ray Rehabilitation Clinic at Veterans Administration in New York City. Mary Margaret McBride, a favorite broadcaster in the New York area, acts as mistress of ceremonies. Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt is one of the guests of honor, as is Bernard Baruch, with plenty of topside VA executives on hand to participate. A statue of Lieutenant Ray, Congressional Medal of Honor winner, who gave his life so that his comrades might live, is unveiled by his parents as proud onlookers. Private First Class Dick Vidal, Lieutenant Ray's buddy, is present and pays his tribute, too. In another part of the building, the manufacture of artificial limbs takes place. Here are put into use all the newest, proven ideas on artificial aids. XGIs work on these artificial arms and legs, and every order is especially tailored to meet individual needs. Many try-ons are necessary, and trained personnel see that each patient has a perfect fit. Outfitted somewhat like a gymnasium, disabled veterans are taught to rehabilitate injured bodies to go back into civilian life. Here we see a street laid out to exact size of a New York City crossing with a traffic light connected directly to the city system. This helps to train veterans in timing their crossing. For injured backs and legs weakened by long stays in bed, 
various types of machines are used to limber and strengthen. Here are the familiar exercise cycles. Disabled veterans out of the hospitals on their own will have to navigate public thoroughfares and transportation systems without help. Actual turnstiles and mock-up subway car give the rehabilitation student a taste of the real thing. Everything except the rocking and rolling and the pushing crowds. That's for the graduate only. Like something out of Alice in Wonderland is this huge checkerboard, laid out on the floor with the disabled veterans moving the heavy pieces from square to square. Another good exercise for injured legs and backs. Yes. The latest in rehabilitation methods with the best doctors and assistants and the newest proven inventions built and fitted by veterans are furnished here at the Lieutenant Ray Clinic, New York City. Help yourselves by easing a big problem at the Veterans Administration. The central office of the VA in Washington alone receives close to four million letters each month from veterans all over the country. Not that the Veterans Administration is not glad to hear from you, it is, and it's happy to help you in any way possible. But you can help the VA give better, faster service to you and your fellow veterans if you remember three simple rules. One, Go in person to your nearest VA office instead of writing whenever you can. Two, if you must write, give your full name and address, your service serial number, and any other information that may help the VA identify you. Three, don't write the Veterans Administration about matters it can't help you with, such as housing problems, jobs, or surplus property. These matters are handled by other government agencies. Remember, the easiest way to get fast service from the Veterans Administration on questions of insurance, pensions, education and training, or hospital and medical care is to go in person to your nearest local Veterans Administration office. Friendly help and the answer to your problems are waiting for you there.